Welcome, everybody, to the latest edition of The Bullpen with Adam the Bull, brought to you by Bet Rivers. Coming up on today's podcast, Browns play another preseason game, but if no starters play, do we really care? Well, we do, and I'll tell you why in just a few minutes. Plus, the Guardians, a miserable weekend. We'll spend a little time on that, but we begin with the Browns and the injuries. That's coming up in The Bullpen with Adam the Bull, brought to you by Bet Rivers. You're watching Adam the Bull on the Bet Rivers Network. The Browns lost their second straight uh, preseason game. Uh, I don't know why anybody would care about that. The score doesn't matter. They did lose 27 to 12. But what they lost more than that was more offensive linemen. And it's becoming a problem. Um, the Browns, first of all, let's start with Jed Wills. I don't know what's going on here. He had surgery. Almost a year ago on his knee, he's an offensive lineman. There seems to be some disconnect between him and the team. Uh, You're hearing a lot of rumblings behind the scenes that the team expected him to be ready. Now, you know, who knows what the truth is? Kevin Stefanski publicly just said, hey, Jed's working hard, but he's not going to practice this week. So you're starting left tackles, not practicing. Um, James Hudson, who's terrible, got hurt. Hakeem Adeneje got hurt. Uh, Their fourth string left tackle got hurt. It is a mess. And now Deshaun Watson, who hasn't played the entire preseason, we haven't seen him on the field in forever, is going to play supposedly in this final preseason game Saturday night in Seattle. And who's going to be protecting his blind side? I don't know. It's uh, a very ugly situation. And... To me, there are some serious concerns about this Browns offense heading into the season. Obviously, I feel very good about the defense. I don't – there's zero to do with the preseason. Well, the reason the preseason mattered was because of the injury. It has nothing to do with – none of the guys that mattered played. Both quarterbacks were terrible, by the way. Huntley was bad. Dorian Thompson Robinson was bad. Neither had much time to throw the ball because the offensive line is an issue. The Browns couldn't really run the ball. Uh, you know, nothing – particularly stood out uh, to me in the uh, in this game from a positive standpoint because n- most of the guys of note didn't play. But when we look at the offense, we're heading into the season here, okay? The season starts in three weeks. <clears throat> and um, you have a situation where the defense, you feel good about. It. Coming off a good season, it didn't end well, but everybody's returning pretty much. You've made some additions, but no drastic changes to the defense. No drastic changes to the defensive staff. There's continuity there. Not much has changed, and they were the strength of this team last year. On the offensive side, yes, Kevin Stefanski will still be the play play caller, which is, is a positive for me. That's good. There's consistency there. But you have new cooks I'm making the brew here, and all these guys are new. The quarterback hasn't played. Obviously, we don't know what uh, what he's going to look like. I think we're pretty sure he's going to play week one. We don't know it f- for certainty. With certainty, I assume he's going to play week one, but we have no idea what to expect. I don't know what to expect for Deshaun Watson. I haven't seen good play since he's been here uh, for more than little bits and pieces, and he's coming off another injury. I don't know what he's going to look like. We haven't seen it. We haven't even seen him on the on the uh, uh, in the preseason, and now we will. But now he's going to get boat raced potentially because they have no offensive, uh, no left tackle. It's a major problem. And uh, in in terms of the running game, obviously we don't know when Nick Chubb's going to be ready to play. Uh, I, I happen to think Jerome Ford's a decent player. Deontay Foreman's a decent player, but neither one of them is Nick Chubb. We've got new guys in the passing game. You've got new coaches. You've got question marks at the offensive line. I I just right now, and maybe I'll feel differently when we get to opening day against Dallas, but against the Cowboys defense that should be pretty good this year and has a very good front with a good pass rush and a decent secondary, uh, I'm nervous about what the Browns are going to be able to do offensively in that game. And uh, you hope that the defense could keep keep it close. And and again, you know, just because I have concerns doesn't mean it's going to be a disaster. I'm just saying I don't know what to expect. I'm not saying the Browns' offense is going to suck. 
I'm just saying I'm not sure what it's going to look like. I don't know why I had to say I'm just saying. I could just could have just said it. The Browns can go out there week one. Deshaun Watson might look great. He might throw for 300 yards and three touchdowns, and the Browns could win handily, and everybody's thrilled. But I can't. I don't know how I could, how I or you or anybody could have any confidence in that happening right now. There's just at the moment far too many question marks on the offense to to have any level of confidence. So yes, I do think it's important for uh, Deshaun Watson to get out there and play for the first time in forever in this third preseason game. But in the same vein, it's also not an ideal situation because of what's happened at tackle. I mean, you look at the depth. Let's let's look at the depth chart because we're down to guy. And, and first of all, the Browns need to go out and get another tackle. You got Jedrick Wills on the pup list. He hasn't practiced at all. We got Jack Conklin on the pup list. He hasn't practiced at all. Luke Whipler got hurt. I know he's not a, a tackle, but he got hurt because we haven't seen him. Uh, you look further down the depth chart. James Hudson who's the second uh, tackle, he's hurt. Akeem Adenije, who they picked up, former Bengal, former Viking, hurt. You're down to guys like Lorenzo Thompson. I think Jermaine Ifedi, who's listed as the third string right tackle on the roster, who they picked up as a free agent. I think he might have been in San Francisco. I know he played, I'm pretty sure he played for Seattle in the past. He's probably going to be starting at left tackle. At least he's played in the league. But it's it's a very – I mean, when you're down to your fi- fourth or fifth option at left tackle, it's pretty concerning. Did I fed he play for Seattle? Yeah, he started with Seattle. Um, he was a – he was actually a first-round pick back in 2016. Uh, he hasn't started a game since 2021. He hasn't played, period, since 2022. He was a starter in Seattle from 16 to 19 and with the Bears for 2020 and half of 2021. But since the middle of the 21 season, the guy hasn't has barely played and hasn't started a game. So and that's probably right now your best option because all the other options at left tackle at the moment are undrafted rookie free agents. I mean, good luck with that. Um, so the offensive line situation is quite concerning right now. And the Browns may need to, you know, not that there's much out there in free agency at this time of the season, but if you could find a veteran tackle who, who, um, who was maybe going to retire and talk him out of it, uh, now's the time because he still, so uh, David Bakhtiari, Bakhtiari for the Packers is probably the best player out there. He's missed a ton of time due to injury, but he's only 32 years old. I don't, you know, he hasn't signed with anybody. Um, I have no idea what, why, he, I, I don't know if he's unofficially retired. Who knows? You got DJ Humphreys, who used to be a starter for the Cardinals. He's all right. He had a bad year last year, a uh, lot of injuries with him. Uh, the, Charles Leno, 32 years old. He's been a decent player. Um, that So there's three guys right there that have to be better than what they have. I mean, none of the – David Bakhtieri, if he's, if he's healthy, it's a big if, uh, supposedly he is now um, – is, is a good player. I, I mean, if I'm the Browns, I got to be aggressive and go out and get somebody because I, I'm down to the Drex at the left tackle position. And you can't, when you're going to play your franchise quarterback next week for the first time in, in, in a long time, he's got, you got to at least try to protect him. I can't throw in my fifth string left tackle. And you might not have a choice, but. Because I don't know, maybe the three guys I mentioned are not in in playing shape yet. I have no idea if any of those guys have been keeping in shape or want to play. I, I, you know, I don't know. But um, 
the Browns have to at least – I'm sure they're doing their due diligence. I mean, to be fair to them, a lot of this just happened over the weekend. Um, but once uh, Kevin Stefanski said Jedrick Wills is not going to practice or play this week, I mean, if he can't practice or play this week, is he going to be ready for the opener? So we got to get – you got to get somebody in there. And I, I would assume today that, if you know, a day off yesterday that, that the Browns are working – maybe they already did it yesterday. But you got to be working out free agent uh, offensive linemen at this point. And it's got to be guys that are ready to play. I can't, you know, we can't get some guys out of shape. It's got to be, you know, a, a veteran player who has kept himself in good shape and is ready to play. And I don't, I, you know, who knows if there is somebody in that situation, but that's what's got to happen. Because uh, otherwise, you're putting your quarterback, who there's already a lot of questions about, in grave danger. Now, even if it's not the preseason, um, like I said, we're less than three weeks away from the opener. And I don't know if Jed Wills is going to play. Maybe they know he's going to play. And so they're not worried. But if they were that sure he was going to play in, in 20 days... Why wouldn't he p- play in the last preseason game to protect Deshaun Watson? So if he's not, if he's ruled out a week before the last preseason game, how could they be a hundred percent certain he's going to play in three weeks? I don't know, uh, and that's why I think it is imperative that the Browns go out there aggressively and try to get an offensive lineman. In terms of the rest of this game, this I, I mean, there's really nothing. Nothing really stood out. Um, I don't care about the score. I don't care about the win or loss. These things are all meaningless. Um, All that matters is keeping guys healthy in this last game. Uh, Like I said, I didn't think either quarterback performed particularly well. Tyler Huntley threw two picks. DTR threw one. I guess Huntley was worse. I wasn't impressed with either guy. Again, you had a bad offensive line. You didn't have much running game. On the ground, uh, Deontay Foreman, Aiden Robbins, and Pierre Strong. Forget Huntley's running. Those three guys come uh, 19 carries for 37 yards, so that's less than two yards per carry. Deontay Foreman did have a couple nice plays in the passing game, which is not usually his thing. He actually had five targets and caught them all. Um, The Browns also lost two of the three guys battling for the third tight end spot. And so you wonder if they're going to, I would think they're going to bring another tight, a tight end into camp as well. Um, so Brown's dealing with some depth injuries, but the biggest one obviously is at left tackle, and that needs to be addressed. It's not easy to do at this time of year. Nobody's trading, the, trading you a left tackle. That's uh, likely to be a starter. All right. Um, let's get to the Guardians. It was an awful weekend for the Guardians. They were swept in Milwaukee, and now they got to go to New York in the Bronx. Uh, It's been a weird stretch here. The Guardians, since the All-Star break, they lost three of four. Then they won seven of nine. Then they lost seven in a row. Then they won five in a row, and now they've lost three in a row going into the Bronx. Day off today. Three-game series starting tomorrow. But this was, I mean, the pitching was outside. Of, a lot of disappointing things from this weekend. First of all, Gavin Williams was the only starter of the six starters that pitched in this series, both teams, that didn't pitch well. And coming off that great start last time was a big disappointment. Tanner Bybee pitched well. Ben Lively bounced back. He had a good start. But they couldn't hit a lick in this series. Four runs in three games. And going back even to the last two games against the Cubs, only uh, – 12 runs in their last five games. Uh, so it was just, I mean, it was pathetic. The offense just unable to do anything against Milwaukee. They got shut down by Colin Ray, a journeyman, who was pitched well. I'll give him his credit. He's like a Ben Lively this year for them. And Aaron Savale, who we know well, who's been terrible. Obviously, he was inspired. He pitched great in that game. Give him his credit. Uh, and now you go to the Bronx. You got Matthew Boyd making his start, second start against Luis Heal tomorrow. On Wednesday, Alex Cobb's third start against Nestor Cortez. And then Thursday afternoon to end the series, Gavin Williams against Garrett Cole. Which So you're not facing easy pitching, 
Obviously, Cortez hasn't been as good this year. Uh, you're going to be facing Cole Reagans in Kansas City. You're going to face Nate Evaldi, not in Kansas City, but at home against Kansas City. You're going to face Nate Evaldi on Friday, the first game of that Rangers series when they come back home. So the Guardians are going to be tested. The offense has got to wake the hell up. It's just been pathetic these last three games. And you had the good momentum, nice sweep of the Cubs after salvaging that Minnesota series. And to just lay an egg like that, not even take one in Milwaukee, was really disappointing. And meanwhile, Kansas City's won four in a row. Uh, Minnesota did lose yesterday, but the Twins are only two back, and the Royals are only three back. This division is far from over, and it's it's a battle. I mean, the Guardians have played 124 games. They have 38 games left. They're going to have to win a lot of those. They, you know, the way this division's going, they may need to win 97, 98 to win this division because you got three teams playing well. The Kansas City Royals have the second best run differential in baseball. That's meaningful. They're plus 109. Only the Yankees are better at plus 116. They are scoring a lot of runs. The Royals and Twins have scored 42 more runs than the Guardians. That's pretty significant. That's, you know, about a third of a run more per game. That adds up. That matters. Now, the Guardians given up the least amount of runs, a lot less than the Twins, but not a lot less than the Royals. They've only allowed 11, 11 runs less than the Royals. So uh, the Royals are playing really good baseball, led by Bobby Witt and you know Cole Reagans and Seth Lugo in that rotation. They made some moves in the deadline that have helped. The Guardians didn't do much. Obviously, Lane Thomas has been a huge disappointment in his first three weeks with the team. That's frustrating right now. All right, that's going to do it for me today. Thanks to Andrew and Max for producing. Thanks to all of you for watching and listening. Please hit the subscribe. Please hit the like. Uh, I'll be back with my next podcast on Wednesday. Until then, we'll talk to you next time. Where else but right here in the bullpen with Adam the Bull, brought to you by Bet Rivers. See you, everybody.